I don't care. I truly don't care. I absolutely don't care about what you think of me. But do I really don't care? Don't you think that there are sometimes those hurting words, those little movements of eyes, or just those little moments of silence that kills you in a way that you just want to lay in bed for the rest of your life? Let me tell you, being a teenager can be tough. We are told not to care about the silly little things that people say about us, but at the same time, we're, they say to appreciate the small things in life. How on earth am I supposed to do this when the silly little things that people say about me are in fact not silly at all? I try not to care, but do I really don't care? People around me will tell you that Marta is a happy person. And indeed, I am happy. And I was happy because I love making people happy. I love seeing them smiling. And I love when someone says to me that I'm a happy person. Most of all, I wanted to stay happy for those people around me who were, however, oblivious of what was really happening to me. Do you really think that when people I consider friends were calling me a big mistake and I didn't care? Or do you really think that I lost 15 kilos just because I didn't care? Do you really think that every time I opened my closet, unable to wear what I wanted, I just didn't care? Do you really think that the shining smile I used to have was nowhere to be found on my lips just because I didn't care? Or the times I was crying in my bed, hiding from everyone, yeah, right, I didn't care. But I still couldn't find the problem, no matter how hard I tried, and I still said, I don't care. People are mean, but us, ourselves, are worst. We build this whole pain upon us because what is life without pain? We create this imaginary fantasy of us suffering through something that no one ever has gone through before. When in reality, there are other thousands of people that are feeling exactly how we feel. We can't change people, that's a fact. But we can change how we treat ourselves. Because I also know for a fact that we are our own worst enemy. I, in fact, reached a point where the thoughts of other people were influencing my decisions more than my own thoughts or preferences. I was unable to stand on my own path, and that's why I kept falling. So I started to look at myself with the eyes of the people that were telling me that I wasn't enough. And only by putting myself in their shoes, I understood that the only shoes that, I, that will fit me were mine and only mine. And that I was the only one able to criticize myself. So yeah, for the first time, I told myself that not only I care, but I was also ready to do something about it. I don't really know precisely when I started to really care about me and what I thought about myself, but at some point I found a fire that was burning inside. I remember one afternoon at my house, home alone, just received a text from my best friend, who was with a guy, another friend of mine. And the text read, how's the diet going? Alluding to the fact that I should have actually started one. So I stood up, crying of course, because it was really time to say goodbye to my grandma's lasagna and my dad's carbonara once and for all. But I also remember saying, looking at myself in the mirror, this is my battle and I'm going to win it. After countless failures, I overcame this will and obsession to try to change people's mind about me. And I realized that I could not change anybody but myself. I felt the need to lose weight because in my head, the shape of my body always became before the shape of my heart. I needed the confidence to show that I was more than just a big mistake that under that bigger body, there was a hurt human being that was all but a mistake. Being called a mistake stopped me from showing the real me because that big was compressing my desire of getting out there and expose myself. Therefore, I started step by step to lose a kilo after a kilo and I just discovered that looking at the whole picture wasn't really helping me. I realized that looking at the small drawing in the corner was better. 
that I was really supposed to live moment by moment and working on one assignment at a time and working on myself more. I needed to gain that confidence that everyone is talking about. That small jump that makes you go through pain and joy, but when you hit the ground, you know you've gone through a lot and you loved it. The most important thing that I realized during the process of getting my feelings out is that I really decided to go through all of this alone. I never told anyone, not even my parents, about my feelings this past two years, until I started writing them down for my TED talk five months ago. For some reason, I was able to remove the path that brought me to where I stand today. It almost felt as those dark months never existed before I started to hear the stories of my friends in the TED Club. Hearing the passion they felt throughout their experiences encouraged me to share this reality that I kept hidden, hidden for so long. Now I know that before I was forcing myself to keep everything inside because I was not feeling comfortable with the many people around me who unfortunately were not helping me to shine on my, on my full potential. Cutting them off was difficult but necessary. This is also why I'm starting just now to learn how to deal with my everyday problems. If I was keeping everything inside before, now even the smallest problem makes me explode. This also explains why some people see me as too dramatic and emotional sometimes. But who know, knows me well knows as well that is just a part of my new persona. Moreover, what I learned is that it is easy to hide our fears and insecurities. It's important to understand that very often we build upon ourselves that imaginary fantasy based on I'm not good enough. And we believe our own imagination. We need to fight the enemy inside us. And ironically, we need to be the bigger person. People have told me that I've changed a lot, especially this past year, that I'm not the one I was before, and all the same things they say when these things happen. But I'm happy they notice because yes, I have changed, and now I'm confident to say so. No more hiding, no more pretending to be someone else or to be someone I'm not. You see, the small act of starting to care of my body brought me to a series of discoveries. You have to learn to love and appreciate yourself. You have to be surrounded by people who lift you up and not those who bring you down. If you're in bed and crying and hiding from everybody else, you feel that every part of your body hurts and you feel you have no control over your life, I'm here to tell you it's temporary. Because yes, it is always temporary, good and bad, nice and ugly. It is temporary and we just need to wait and work for the change to come because change will come. I know this because today I'm in a better place. Right now, I know that I'm not alone and everyone needs to deal with these big mistakes. And I'm telling you that you have the power to change how you feel by starting to love yourself, to appreciate your own shoes, because after all, there's only one you and that's what makes you great. If I can do it, you can do it. Let them see who you really are and know who they really want you to be. Thank you.